Well, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Tom Golden with Capture Higher Ed. We're a few minutes out from the beginning of the webinar. Uh, so uh, we'll get started here right at the top of the hour. You can ask questions uh, uh, through the GoToWebinar app on the right using the uh, widget that's over there. Just ask questions and we'll answer them as we go through. Okay. Well, by my clock, it is time to get started. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tom Golden. I am the Senior Vice President of Data Science at Capture Higher Ed uh, and the co-host of the Waitlist Podcast. Uh, really excited that you had a chance to join us for our presentation, Yielding Your Diamond in the Rough Student Populations. Uh, this will be an opportunity for us to um, to introduce you to some new rules and maybe some new thinking about yield. We are very excited to have you with us. Uh, we want to hear from you. I know this format sometimes is a little bit uh, crazy in terms of asking questions, but we will uh, answer everyone that we receive. You can use the uh, GoToWebinar app to ask a question, um, and uh, we can do that as we kind of go through. Um, let's take a second to also mention that a, a, a video recording of this will be sent out to anyone who is on this call today. Uh, and uh, we're very excited again to have you with us. Uh, real fast about me, um, uh, my, my role at Capture Higher Ed is to um, manage all the major data projects that we have, uh, different machine learning models that we do, and to take uh, our main platform, which is a, a, a marketing automation software that I'll tell you about later, um, and take all that uh, rich data out of that and make it uh, usable for our partners. Um, I'm also joined on the call by my uh, good friend and colleague, uh, George Kirkland. George, why don't you say hello and introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm George Kirkland. I'm uh, one of the co-founders here at, at Raise Me and work with a lot of our, our college partners and uh, also on, on partnerships uh, uh, like the one we have with the folks at Capture. Uh, Tom and I you know, found each other uh, along the way um, and, and uh, saw a lot of alignment in what our companies were doing. I actually joined the wait list uh, as well on one That's of the right, earlier yeah. podcasts. Um, and we're really uh, excited to, to talk to you a little bit about, 
today about something that's really timely, which is yielding your students. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and jump into some of the work that we're going to be going through today. So first, I, I want to talk about just really briefly the, why we're doing this podcast together. Uh, you probably already figured this out, or, or perhaps you have uh, heard the, the news. We just recently announced that Capture Higher Ed and Raise Me are going to be officially working together uh, to try and bring some new new tools to the to the higher ed market space to try and challenge, you know, create some some new opportunities that that maybe haven't existed before. Um, and as a specifically relates to yield. Uh, I don't have to spend a huge amount of time, you know, explaining why yield is such an important thing, uh, but maybe there's some things that uh, we can touch on that maybe you haven't thought of in terms of why that might be. Um, and there are some definite significant challenges for particular populations. And so, uh, as you know, our, our 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 program today is called Yielding Your Diamond in the Rough Student Populations. Yield as a whole is challenging, but then there's different populations that uh, pro are really quite difficult um, to really get your hands around in terms of being able to systematically uh, reach out to and engage um, in a way that increases their yield. And we want to introduce to you five new rules, uh, some new thinking on how to leverage these platforms and others like it to be able to reach these students. So. Some of the things that you probably uh, maybe have heard or not about why you know, Capture and Raise Me are working together. So this was a partnership that was just announced on March 6th. And we, uh, I, I met George, uh, I, I wanna say, I was looking in my mind, George, I think it was September, it was at NACAC in 2015. And uh, we started just brainstorming ways that we could work together. Um, and we're gonna break that open obviously today. Uh, but, but primarily it centers around the idea of linking university recruitment um, integrating that university recruitment and building it in with the Raise Me platform, which offers some really unique opportunities to engage with students in a different platform and um, engage with them in meaningful ways. And so that's really what we're about. And so this is our first uh, uh, you know, effort to, to build out some new, new um, opportunities. We would love to hear from you in terms of what you would want to see um, kind of moving forward. All right, why yield matters. I don't, uh, it's not anything groundbreaking. Uh, it's not really a hot take to tell you that, you know, we've been on a path uh, in higher ed and enrollment management for the last two decades of really emphasizing app growth. And uh, and we've seen now a shifting uh, in the last, not even, you know, five to six years of shifting away from emphasis on app growth um, and emphasis on yield. Um, and I'll, I'll explain a little bit on that. Um, but really the, the industry as a whole was um, in terms of what the consulting firms that were out there and other types of you know, general advice that was given was grow your app as, as high as, you know, as, as large as you can. Uh, and that prosperity will sort of filter down uh, through it. Uh, you combine that with the fact that students themselves are applying to more schools primarily because of new technologies uh, that are reducing the friction to applying. And so 35% of students uh, are, are submitting more than uh, seven or more applications, according to the NACAC uh, uh, State of College Admissions. But what, where that really started the shift was uh, from Moody's Investor Services in 2014, when they really shifted how they rate uh, institutions. Um, and I'll talk about that in just a second, but they, they looked at bonding rates and for really for the first time really made a statement that says application growth have, has been uh, sort of hacked and in, in, in sort of overly inflated and that they no longer viewed application growth as a, as a really reliable barometer on, you know, on, on increasing demand. But there's the other thing here too is that's happening is you have obviously the overall institutions seeing uh, tougher and tougher yields, decreasing yields. Uh, so the average yield rate uh, last year was 35, uh, over 35%, which has been on a steady downward trend, um, you know, 48.7% in 2002. But that's only one kind of melt that we wanna talk about today. The other kind of melt is more um, on a national sort of systemic level, uh, which is getting a lot more uh, notoriety, which is the fact that students are uh, who 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 would who originally were intending to go to college in many cases depositing, um, or, or really stating that they want to go. About forty percent of them do not enroll anywhere. 
So when a student melts at an institution, um, a lot of times we uh, sort of in the industry think, well, they went somewhere else. Um, but what we're seeing is more and more that those some of those students aren't going uh, anywhere. Uh, and um, that's an important thing we want to talk about. Okay, so about the, the idea of bonding and where that comes in, where, where, where these bonding agencies tend to look at is, is trying to address and look at um, demand. Um, so what you're looking at is the Moody's Investor Services um, higher ed scorecard. And you can see I've, I've highlighted the very, very top level reputation and pricing power being 5%, which if you combine it with strategic positioning down below it, uh, represents a pretty significant chunk. So the, the two of those together um, is more weight than the total wealth of a college. Um, and so that is where your plans to grow enrollment or to, to grow yield, um, the amount that the market is really basically you know, demanding in terms of financial aid and the growth in financial aid, that is a major aspect of, of how universities are able to, to um, the price of debt, if you will. So it's another level that maybe people really don't, unless you're sort of in the VP seat and you, you have those meetings with bonding agencies, uh, you don't tend to see. Um, so the other aspect then of the, that sort of second level of, of melt is that we're seeing more and more financial aid gapping um, with uh, uh, students of color. So Hispanic and black and Asian students, about two thirds of them saw a gap between their total resources and COA compared to 54% of white students. Um, and debt, overall debt is, is greater um, for, um, for black college graduates as compared to white students uh, after a four year period. Well, kind of, you know what what it ends up then happening is that many of these students uh, are looking at saying, well, I, I can't afford it now. Uh, I, I don't want to have all this debt, and so they don't choose to to enroll. So, part of the solution here, obviously, is to try and find ways to increase the the total amount of aid. But what I think you know raised me is onto is that it's more than that. That it's about engaging in a process. Um, you, you know, we can't just solve a problem by just approaching it as the transition period between seniors and college. The, the, the problem is much earlier in how we talk about financial aid and how we address it. So I'm going to hand it over to George then to kind of help you help introduce what is Raise Me. I think a lot of people on the call know it, uh, but if you don't or maybe you don't know it as well, um, kind of hear about it. And that's how we're going to start in terms of figuring out how you could use you know, Raise Me and Capture to really tackle these major issues. All right, thanks a lot. And uh, I hopefully I have uh, control of the, the slide deck now. So I think most of you know uh, who, who Raise Me is, maybe 95%, um, but I'll do a quick run through uh, because uh, I wanna save time for, for the good stuff. So, um, all right, I believe I have control. Thank you, George. Yeah, I think you're good now. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so Raise Me is a social enterprise. We started back in, in 2012. And, you know, our whole idea is how do we get more students uh, to and through college? Um, and specifically, how do we get them to and through our college partners? Um, when we started looking at the landscape, um, and, you know, Tom talked about this a little bit himself, we kept coming back to the same thing, and that was financial aid. Uh, and what we saw is that um, financial aid is, is such uh, an important aspect of the decision-making process, um, but the issue was that scholarships come too late. So scholarships come the second semester of your, your senior year, which is really too late to impact students' college ambitions or their individual application decisions. So too often we see you know, ninth and 10th graders falling off track, thinking that the college isn't for them, uh, or that it's it's just not a not a good fit, um, and so I raised me. We thought, well, what what if we could could change that? Yeah, there you go. Sorry. All right. Sorry, I'm losing control here. Yep. There you go. I can just advance it here. That's fine. Sorry about that, George. There you go. Apologize. All right, I'm not seeing it. Hold on one second.
There we go. Sorry, guys. I'm not sure what's going on there. All right. Um, and so we thought, well, what if we could get scholarships to, to students earlier um, and, and we could actually use those scholarships, not just as a reward, but to help more students uh, stay on track um, and, and go to college in the first place. And so that's what, what we've built. Um, and if we advance to the next slide, um, we'll show you a um, quick video just on how it works for those of you who haven't seen it. So this is a student's uh, portfolio, and you can see that they're putting in a grade here. Uh, they got uh, took calculus A, B, and they got an A. Uh, when they save it down, they're immediately going to see up in the right-hand side uh, that they got $150 from University of, of Pittsburgh. Um, so this is a, um, a really fun experience for students. Uh, it's a way for them to earn their scholarships to college incrementally. Um, we call those pop-ups from colleges uh, electronic high fives, um, and uh, it's a it's a type of engagement that you can have with students uh, that uh, is a positive, personalized engagement, um, which also um, emphasizes your affordability uh, to students at at all times. And so, um, raise me is. Uh, grown quite a bit. We've got 1.2 million students using the platform, about 300 colleges and 30,000 educators. Uh, in terms of the benefits, you know, for students, uh, you know, they're able to stay motivated and on track, see a path towards affordability and discover colleges. Um, for colleges, the th things that we're really focused on is getting aid in front of students earlier. Um, uh, uh, having that that earlier engagement that's personalized so getting in front of ninth and tenth graders um, and then also student success so a lot of our colleges are actually incentivizing students to do things that will set them up for success once they get to your institution so taking a calculus level math course or um, completing a financial aid literacy course uh, before they arrive to campus we actually see that raise me students retain at a higher rate um, and have a lower summer melt rate um, across all of our partners, uh, they see that students yield at a higher rate and are admitted at a higher rate. Um, and that's kind of the magic ticket. Uh, it really creates a, a much narrower funnel. These are some of our shared partners. Uh, just, just a subset here. I think some of you are, are probably on the phone. Um, and this is what, what in part led to our partnership is we saw that there was a lot of overlap, a lot of innovative uh, campuses were, were working with both Raise Me and Capture. Now, for the, for the new rules. So I'll go through the first couple uh, new rules for Yield, and then, uh, and then Tom can, can jump in and, and cover a couple, and then I'll finish, finish up with the last rule. Um, so the first one, probably not what you want to hear uh, at this point in, uh, in the year. Uh, start early and, and stay engaged. Um, so uh, the good news is this isn't the only rule. So I'm not saying that that if you didn't start early, um, that that it's uh, that you're in trouble. Um, but this is a, a very important part of the uh, of, of the yield uh, strategy. If you're not starting with students early, um, you're really going to be behind the eight ball by the by the time we get to the senior year. So what I'm showing here is actually um, a pipeline for one of our college partners. They have about 50,000 students following them on Raise Me. And if you look at the breakdown on the right-hand side, the seniors that are following them, um, you can see that about 1,200 of those students that are following them, they're currently seniors, followed them on Raise Me as freshmen. About 8,000 followed them as sophomores and 5,000 followed as juniors. And you can see the pipeline from there. They actually have, for juniors, they have over 7,000 students that follow them as, as freshmen. So the story is, if you wait till senior year, it's, it's too late. Um, the longer engagement you, you have with students, 
uh, the more time they have to research your school uh, and to, to determine fit. Another reason to start early is to help students stay on track. One of the things that I say is the, the biggest issue that we face is uh, a lot of times we just try to wait till senior year and recruit the students that are college ready. But really what we should be trying to do is develop a larger pool of, of college ready students um, and, and, and increase that, that pool of students uh, that are going to, to four year colleges. Um, we see overall that two thirds of students say that Raise Me helped with their college search and over half of students uh, say that Raise Me affected their decision of where they ultimately attended college. All right, uh, next rule. So it's, it's not just about the dollars. Um, I know that so sounds silly um, coming from, from Raise Me uh, because we lead with, with money, but I say this to people all the time. I say it's about the money, but it's, it's not about the money. And, and what I mean by that is um, financial aid is important. Uh, let's, let's make sure we're all on the, the same page about that. When you look at the factors that contribute to student enrollment, you see financial aid, cost, um, you know, at the, at the high end of this. Um, and we know that 50% of seniors rule out an institution based on, on sticker price. Um, so it is really important that students aren't looking past your institution and are, that they're noticing you, they're understanding that, that you are an affordable option. Um, but that's just the start of it. Uh, there's a quote down here from a student. This is one of our students that went to York uh, College of Pennsylvania. Um, they said they'd never heard of the school before until they found it on Raise Me. After doing this, they went for an open house and they fell in love. Raise Me also introduced them to schools and showed them that the sticker price on a school will never be the price that they pay. So it's really seeing that a, that a college is affordable uh, that makes the student want to research your school more um, and ultimately determine that your, your school is a good fit. Um, so getting that cost barrier out of the way is important, but then having the engagement, um, making sure that student uh, understands that you're a good fit is the, the next step from there. So I say it's not about financial aid, you know, but financial aid is the conversation starter. Um, a student that's on Raise Me, that's following a college partner, they're getting that message of affordability. Um, but there's another aspect of it. Uh, we say that every time a student gets a pop-up, when they get a good grade or do an extracurricular, uh, we call that an electronic high five. Um, the average student that's following a college for three years, they're getting 35 uh, pop-up notifications from your university along the way. You can almost think of it as a, an automated messaging uh, plan for these students that's encouraging them along the way, keeping them on track and messaging your affordability. Uh, the other thing is our college partners are using micro scholarships to incentivize students um, to do things that will prepare them to be successful at their institution. They're also, also using micro scholarships to drive yield activity. Um, and this is something you should do whether or not you're a Raise Me partner. Um, in your yield, uh, you know, this time of year, uh, all of your messaging uh, should be trying to drive um, the next step uh, in your process. So visiting campus, um, completing the FAFSA, there should always be an action item at the end of your messaging. And these are uh, things that our, our colleges are awarding micro scholarships for um, and then including in their messaging uh, to students. Uh, there's another quote down here just about a student who uh, learned about Jackson, Jacksonville University and then uh, began to visit each school uh, that offered them a micro scholarship and that's how they found Jacksonville um, and, and became a, a proud dolphin. Cool. All right, Thanks. I'm going to pass it back to Tom. You bet. Thanks, George. So uh, let me let me take a little bit of time just to, uh, again, just show people who, who maybe don't know, uh, to talk about Capture Higher Ed, uh, who we are. Uh, we are a, uh, a uh, marketing and data firm out of Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and our point of view is that you know, the, the, the major uh, impetus or the major um, uh, 
uh, that what the industry really has been pushing is this idea that uh, you know you, you you don't have enough students that are interested in you. So you need to buy a whole bunch of students. You need to uh, carpet bomb them basically with all kinds of messaging. And in our view is that you're missing, uh, what's missing from that is perhaps your most powerful uh, brand vehicle, uh, which is your website. Uh, so our view is that there is a very powerful stream of interested students uh, who, are, who are uniquely interested in you that are hidden more or less in plain sight right there on your website. You can't really see them. They're there all the time. They are um, there when you brush your teeth and when you wake up, when you're drinking coffee in the office, they're there all the time, but you can't access them. And if you do, maybe you're using Google Analytics, you can see that a certain number of people uh, came to your site, but you don't know who they are. And Capture Behavioral Engagement, so our flagship software, allows you to do that. It actually allows you to gain access to that stream uh, of students by name um, and gives you tools to help you engage it. And that's what it does. So, so how, how do we do that? Well, it's, it's, it is similar in a way to Google Analytics. You do take a little bit of code, you place it on your website. Uh, you then use marketing that you're already doing, uh, or we can help you with that as well. We do have those kind of services, but you, you integrate that into some of the, you know, the recruitment that you're doing. Students are opting in, uh, which allows us to, to match up um, some data points that uh, we can use to identify that student. And then you can actually then gain all this control over your website to be able to target specific kinds of students and delight them. You're trying to find, and we can help you do that uh, through uh, our work in, in the data science department to try to help you identify what is what are the key things that this student seems to be looking for and to be able to put that in front of them. And so a student who comes to your website, I, I would like to suggest that they're asking you a question. The, the, it, that question is unique for everybody. Uh, but every time they come, they're asking a question of you, no different than they walked in your front door. And we're very attuned in, in higher red to be able to know how to answer that question. But we don't think about that for our websites. We let them sort of be passive, sort of brand, uh, you know, one way kind of communication. And we suggest that there, there's a really a, a ton that can be done there. Um, and we're we're higher ed focused, and we we want to help colleges do that. So three key things that it does: it's a source of students. Again, they're already interested in your school. You don't have to convince them; they're already interested. Uh, it delivers real time data on what they are interested in, what they want to know. Uh, obviously, so many search campaigns are based around what they told uh, the PSAT when they were a sophomore or junior. Um, well, uh, I don't think it's that much of a stretch to say that it's probably changed by now. Um, so while you know all your competitors might be talking to them about engineering, because that's what they told the PSAT, you would be communicating with them about uh, theater and business because that's their love right now. Um, and it saves you time and resources. We are a managed service um, and uh, we utilize uh, a range of different artificial intelligence machine learning tools that can help you uh, be more efficient. All right, so some key stats here. Uh, what we've seen in, in results have been uh, pretty pretty uh, stellar. And we're going to show you kind of how what we've been doing with Rays and the results we've had there. But overall, uh, there's a number of really, really positive things. This is not uh, new technology. It's new to higher ed, um, but it's been well established over many, many different campaigns. And the, the thing I want to get to uh, real fast uh, is a actual a special offer to anyone here that's on this call uh, or any other Raise Me uh, partner that we are offering um, a, a, a early access to our CBE Lite platform. And this is brand new. Uh, we haven't offered it to anyone, uh, but we're offering it to, to you. You can uh, enjoy basically a way for you to see what that stream of students looks like. Uh, be able to do some uh, some some light dynamic content, which I'll show you what I mean by that in a second, um, and do that all uh, completely free. So we would love to show you how that that works um, after you know after our call. All right. So continuing with the new rules uh, for yield. Uh, new rules. Um, we are certainly looking at. Oops. Excuse me. I don't know why he keeps doing that? I really do apologize. We're in a space now where grouping students and segmenting students out by large groups is is really not a, uh, is understandable, but it's really not uh, acceptable anymore. 
we're moving into a space where different technology tools and data tools can allow us actually to present information in front of a student that's unique to them. There's, so the idea of a segment of one is, is critically important. And so that's the spirit that we are operating under. So the idea and what we are doing and uh, with, with Rays is taking these dynamic content. So uh, these are what you're looking at to the right are a range of, of toaster pop-ups that would appear uh, on your site. Uh, it to, it's down in the bottom right, usually. Um, and it can be used to target a range of different activities that you have identified with Raise Me as, as especially critical. Uh, and, and what we can do here is personalize these, number one, so they, they would have Raise Me and they would have uh, they would have your logo and brand it with your colors. Um, so it doesn't look like it's from a completely third third party site. Um, it looks like it's organic to within your brand. But it's but it's targeted and we work with you to say, okay, if it's a student, let's say, who's gone to uh, some academic department websites and maybe gone to a financial aid page um, and it's gone to the admissions page, that seems like a student that is engaging in some activity that, uh, they may be a good a good student that you want to get uh, on the raise platform. And so this toaster pops up and it suggests that they go over to it. We also have a few other options, but these are the basic flavors that you can do. You can choose up to three that would run. And basically where it's sending the student is to your raise me page. So for those of you who aren't familiar within the raise me platform, you have your own sort of space. You have your own um, page that you know, includes a lot of different materials. It, 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 it looks like it's a big part from you. Um, and it's a, a fabulous way for students to start engaging with you through raise me. Um, and um, in, and really providing that early engagement that, uh, that George was talking about. So it's customized. It, it has been shown to uh, really generate higher app rates. It again, again, think about it. You know, our 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 you know our background and our, our environment. You know how we how recruitment has been shaped over the last twenty years is we want to control the message. You know, the co the college does. Well, that's really you know the internet kind of blew that up <laughs> in a major way. So students are are looking at learning about your school through the through your website and through materials with you, of course, but they're also getting a ton of information in other places. What 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 the Rays Capture partnership does is basically creates this ecosystem, if you will, this bubble that goes around your site and raises to you know mutually encourage each other. You know, students who are on your site are interested in you. We want them to be engaging with Rays. All right, so let's go through, and George, George, definitely jump in here if you, you've got uh, things you want to jump in on. So we actually, the very first time we did this was with a small private school um, that uh, was a great partner for 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 both, or, you know, Raise and, and Capture. And so we started to do the pilot. This was the original pilot uh, that we did, and we saw. So so you can see some of the campaign statistics, which are pretty pretty general and pretty representative of what we see, you know, a 7.7 .7, uh, CTR as compared to a 0.07 uh, benchmark through uh, for Google with, uh, you know, uh, targeted banner ads, which is essentially what this toaster pop up is. Um, and uh, it's continued to run right now. You can see the average profile completions was nearly 5x uh, greater. Um, and uh, the, so as compared to um, the overall students, George, is that within RAIS, the uh, ACT uh, points higher than the average? Is that? Yeah, RAIS and their, actual, their yeah. entire uh, freshman class as well. Very good. Um, so you can see that, and you can look at the bottom and see how we targeted that. So again, this is based around parameters that you would set up with our account managers and help you do that. So uh, some additional data about that pilot. So one of the things that you know Capture does, obviously, to be able to identify students, uh, we we share data with you back and forth about who's in your CRM. Um, so we we have integrations that do, that does that. Um, and so you can see the blue dots here uh, are those that were in this particular college's CRM. Uh, no no lie, it, uh, you can easily see that they were in the Midwest. Uh, but you can see the orange dots are uh, students on Raise Me. And uh, so you can see that, you know, the, these students are all over the place. This really takes the power of the Internet and kind of puts it right into your hands. 
but here's the most interesting thing for me, and this is where I, I, I got really excited about you know our work together, was that obviously we can compare the Raise Me student, the student who clicked on those ads uh, or clicked on those toasters and came into Raise and filled out profiles um, as to compared to the overall pool. So this is the, actually the recruitment pool. So the enrolled class, it was two points uh, on the ACT higher for the you know, Raise Me students. But this is actually compared to in real time as they are recruiting them before these students have actually enrolled. How are they different? Well, they're different in three kind of key ways. One is more of them for out of state. Almost half of the Raise Me students were students of color. And academically, they were all stronger. I mean, for, for the diamond and rough, that that's, you know, that's a bit of the trifecta. Those are the things that for diversification, for revenue and for, you know, academic profile are, are really things that that colleges want. And that's when I really got excited um, about it. And, and again, it, it just kind of makes sense. Um, and George, I don't know if, you know, if, if you've seen this in other areas, too, but, I, I you know, it makes sense that a student who is thinking that they're going to receive a scholarship or that a scholarship is going to be really important to them. This is a it's it's a timely sort of hey yeah I, I'm interested in that and they click on it and they kind of move through. So some other so some other examples right so this is another school they were um, promoting the academic aspects you can see at the bottom there that we were targeting anonymous visitors as well as identified I don't want to necessarily get into that on the call but there's a, a different vernacular that we use to describe different kinds of students on your page so they this is for students who went to two academic pages and a financial aid related page and you can see that we went from none, uh, so no profile completions on average to four. Um, again, this is, a, you can see obviously the impressions are small. This is a small school, uh, but obviously going from none to, to four is phenomenal. And academically, again, we're seeing the, the pattern that these are stronger students. Um, again, two academic pages, financial aid pages, seeing a similar kind of result. So we're, we're seeing this sort of validation. Uh, but here's another example of what, uh, sort of the creative groups that are using our, our, you know, the mutual technology is that they're taking that uh, information um, and then feeding it through their, um, feeding it through their normal recruitment, right? So utilizing that data and you can see that going from zero average to 19 average profile completions. And then George, can you touch on the interest score? Tell, tell me about that. You were telling me about that before, but tell me, what is that exactly? And why is that significant? Yeah, so uh, at Raise Me, we provide a custom interest score for each student that is uh, following the institution um, based on their likelihood to apply. Um, and it ranges from zero to one. Um, and what was interest, and it's based on both past enrollment data as well as behavioral data. So, how often the student's looking at your profile page, how many other schools they're following on Raise Me, and that sort of thing. And what was interesting about this group uh, that signed up, and there were a couple hundred at least um, during this campaign uh, was that they had a uh, average interest score of 0.44 um, and the average student following this school on Raise Me had uh, a score of about a 0.09. So it was about 30% higher. Uh, they also had about a 0.2 higher unweighted GPA. Um, so we're talking, and this is no surprise you know the students that are, are clicking on these things they are the most interested students um, it tells us uh, in a sense what we already know yeah okay rule number four simply put if they aren't on your website they aren't that into you and they aren't kind of thing one of the things that we are uh, what we monitor and watch and what we've created through through our data science team is a number of indices that can look at a number of different, you know, web metrics. So, you know, if you're familiar with Google Analytics, you know about clicks and you know about visits and there's a, you know, uh, probably half a dozen different important measures. Um, so what we've done is basically combined you know, all of those uh, plus a few others that we have that, that, they, that Google doesn't have to um, come up with an overall score. And this capture affinity index is, uh, goes from zero to one. Um, or, or excuse me, uh, it goes to zero to 100, but you can see it uh, represented here uh, that way. Um, and I'm showing you from left to right um, what that average score looks like 
for different aspects or different elements of, or different parts of your pipeline, from suspect, uh, a non-inquiry, non-hand raiser, all the way over to deposit and enroll. And so you can obviously see that as a student is going along through your pipeline, they, they just are send, spending more and more time on your website. Um, so there's this narrative that's kind of out there that says, you know, hey, um, you know, students are fickle. They've got all this, you know, uh, you know, things that they're watching and listening to. Tons of media. Uh, you only you only get what the average, you know, visit to a website is less than 15 seconds. You know, we we're actually seeing the opposite. The more students get, are knowing you and moving through your process, they actually are spending a considerable time uh, making that website, uh, you know, as, as 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 powerful as possible is a key differentiator. So another way to here to look at this is we we zoomed in on uh, all of the admitted students and broke them out. Uh, so on the left are students who were admitted who did not enroll. And then on the right are students who are admitted who deposited. So again, uh, if you're looking for a measure of who's interested in you, these CII you know, measures are important. But again, what we're, what we're conveying here is what I think a lot of people know is that if they're on your website, um, they are very interested in you. Um, but the problem is you didn't know who they were. Uh, they were just a number there. And finally, uh, and, and again, I want to remind you, uh, if you have questions, please type them in to the GoToWebinar control panel. There's a question uh, square there uh, that you can submit your questions. And we will, we're coming up here um, on the end. We wanted to leave ample time for questions. Um, so this is our last rule uh, for yield. Uh, so. Again, the, the, the use of new technology oftentimes is framed as an either or, people or computers. Um, and I think what George and I would like to communicate is that yield is, is a human activity. The challenge, however, is, is scale and volume. I'm showing you here uh, uh, the number of applications per admissions officer according to the NACAC State of College Admissions this, this year, 2017, but for the 2016 year. Uh, anybody who's been an admissions counselor knows this and feels this exactly is that there's a number of, you know, it's a large number, even for small schools per admissions counselor to focus on how do you know who to look for and who to look at? Um, and uh, the idea is not necessarily converting more students, although at a macro level, that's what it looks like. What you're actually trying to do is identify students who are interested or who can be influenced to be in, to, to become interested if they are only slightly so. You know, the quote from John Wanamaker that I'm putting out here uh, that you've probably seen before, which is, you know, half the money I spend on advertising is wasted. The problem is I just don't know what half. And so this is an important aspect. This is real uh, that we want to uh, we want to start to address. The idea here is that you know getting more personal and allowing technology to help you move people through to an area where that personal touch really does matter, right, George? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so there are just a couple things uh, that that we highlighted here. And again, you know, the idea is leverage technology uh, so that you do have time. Um, to spend um, with students in a more personal way. Um, and so some of the things that we see folks doing um, out there, getting parents involved, um, for those of you that are Raise Me partners, uh, one thing I'm really excited about is we're gonna start to uh, collect parent information coming up here in the next uh, couple weeks. It's about to be launched. Um, and having a communication plan for them is, is really important something that you can put in place and it's going to really pay a lot of dividends. Uh, another is uh, tracking application status and this could be raise me or another service um, but there's all kinds of, of email surveys, um, call campaigns that you can do um, or even on raise me you can track the student's application status um, but for a student who says that they plan to apply and hasn't applied yet um, get them on um, a campaign um, helping them to, to get their uh, application in um, or do a calling campaign to those students. Uh, for the students that say they plan to enroll, um, that's great information uh, as well. And then it's about um, getting them through the, the registration process. So if there's any way where you can just get a direct answer from the student on their status, that's really gonna help you to, to narrow your resources um, down to the students that you need to spend time with. 
Um, another is um, leveraging the dynamic data uh, that you get. So whether you're a, a capture partner and you're seeing what a student's doing on your website or a raise me partner and you're, you're seeing the student's um, interests change um, or they're reporting things to you uh, or their behavioral interest score on raise me is changing, uh, you have to use those things. So if you see a student um, interest score on raise me bump way up because they've been on your website, um, you know, get in front of that student. That's a student um, that has a high likelihood uh, to enroll. Um, we do FAFSA uh, tracking uh, right now on, on Raise Me. Um, so if a student says they've submitted their FAFSA, but you haven't seen it come into your university, um, it means they didn't list you. That's not, not a great sign. Um, so that's another thing that you can do. Uh, one of the things that Capture is doing that I think is interesting is uh, handwritten letters um, through this third-party service uh, that will actually write the letters uh, for you. Um, and Tom told me of a um, just a story of you know a student who got a handwritten letter and and really that was the uh, determining factor um, on them deciding uh, to go to a school. Um, yeah, they they actually uh, so it, obviously with it being a mailed letter. Uh, but actually, obviously, takes a few days to get there. So uh, the story goes that this student, you know, when we had downloaded that data and started to go through the process of, of sending them out, uh, that student had contacted, this was an admitted student, and had canceled their admission. Uh, then they received the letter and called uh, to say, can I change, can I change what I just told you? Uh, I've never, I've never seen a college do this, um, and uh, was really impressed. So, uh, yeah, these are these are handwritten letters that we can coordinate for you, uh, and uh, and sort of offload that. But it's also connected, and what we're working on is uh, an API that would allow us to do triggered handwritten letters. So uh, imagine that as a as a future environment. That's what's possible. So, yeah. Um, and, and again, you know, the point of leveraging all this technology is is so that it can um, free up some of your time so that you can do the more personal uh, uh, in, in person type of things. And so some of the things that we see uh, as really effective um, following up on all the students that you've uh, given financial aid offers to, um, having a, a list of questions that you can ask them, um, you know, making sure that they understand their financial aid package. I think that's really important. I think we're seeing a trend now of, of colleges connecting students with faculty members uh, or what I would call lookalike students. Uh, so if you have a student, um, you know, from, you know, let's say you're in, in Texas and you enrolled a, a student from, from Oregon uh, last year, having that student um, be an ambassador to you and, and talk to other interested um, accepted students from, from Oregon. Um, I think incomplete application strategies are also really important. Um, uh, you know, we've seen colleges on Raise Me use self-reported test scores and, uh, and GPAs to do conditional uh, admissions um, and then following up with that student. Um, and then, of course, yield events. And, and these are just some of the examples. And I, I would just say for, the, um, for, the, for really anyone on the phone, whether you work with us or not, you know, we're talking to all of our partners about yield strategies and um, getting a feel in each region uh, how how yield is, is going, what's working, what's not working. We're happy to talk about this sort of thing and um, and tell you kind of what we're seeing out in the market. I mean, I know in Florida, for example, right now we're not we're not seeing students deposit the way they used to, um, and and that's a, a trend that's that's scaring a lot of people. And if you're in Florida, that's something that you you really want to know. Um, and so these are just some of the, the things that we're thinking about and talking about with folks, but of course, happy to, to get in more detail on one-on-one on -one calls. So we wanted to leave uh, uh, you know, enough time to answer some questions. We've got, we've got uh, one question that's coming in, so please do submit more. Um, so one is the questions about uh, about yield events. Uh, how, how would this work, or, or you know, how, what what sort of uh, best practices have you seen, George, about you know yield on campus yield events? Um, and I'll just throw in also non on campus, so off campus, so like receptions or other types of things that are hosted around. Tons of schools do them. What have you seen in terms of uh, good best practices for using rays? 
Um, oh man, all, all kinds of, of stuff. Um, I could go on, on forever on this one. I think, um, because, you know, we are raising and we talk about scholarships a lot. I, I think, um, it's important to point out that we do have a lot of our partners that do scholarship events. You know, they bring students to campus. Um, they, they each qualify for a minimum scholarship, but they give them an opportunity to, um, to earn additional scholarships uh, at those, those events. Um, and it's just a great way for them to meet other, other students um, that are also, uh, uh, you, know, ac you know, have the same level of, of academic qualification that, uh, that they do. Um, we also see, and I, I spoke about it a, a little bit already, but um, colleges using past enrolled RAISB students as ambassadors um, with, with current students. Um, having receptions in, in certain regions, um, if, if, you know, we see that you have 10 accepted Raise Me students um, in our portal from a certain region, um, we might suggest a, uh, a reception in, in that area. Um, so a lot of stuff like that, but I can't stress enough how important these yield events are. Um, some of our clients that we talk to this time of year, um, they just have back to back to back um, events in different cities. Um, a lot of times they're not on campus. A lot of times they are out, out on the road. And so if you're not traveling and, and getting out there um, to different regions, um, then you're probably missing out. Cool. Uh, another question, uh, is the Raise Me landing page uh, hosted on the college website or on the Raise Me site? If the sample that was shown, that we showed before, uh, was on the Raise Me's website, is it also a best practice to include a landing page on the college or university's website with details about Raise Me? Uh, great question. Uh, so it's hosted, the, the page that we showed uh, for Asbury, it is hosted on the Raise Me page. So it would be raise.me backslash join backslash Asbury. And that's really a, um, a place where whenever you're talking about Raise Me, you can send students, the minute they sign up, they're automatically connected to your school and they'll become an inquiry uh, in your system. Um, they also will have a little bit more of a, uh, an, in that case, Asbury uh, uh, focused experience. Uh, they end up following fewer schools, getting more pop-ups from, from Asbury, completing their, their Raise Me profile at a higher rate. Um, so we, of course, always suggest that student, you know, colleges refer through that link. Um, the other best practice is, of course, to have your own landing page uh, for Raise Me. Uh, you know, if you look at someone like an Indiana State, uh, they've got a great one. University of Iowa's got a great one. Um, typically, uh, you'll link to Raise Me in, in three or four different places, uh, but it'll go to a landing page that will explain an FAQ on how Raise Me works, how the awards work. Um, and uh, we've got some great examples of that, but that is, is definitely a best practice, more so than just a link or, or a blurb uh, with a, a simple link. Good deal. Thank you for that question. We appreciate it. Uh, I, I uh, want to highlight in front of you uh, that I left out uh, of .com off of George's email. I, uh, hopefully people picked that up. Uh, but you can reach out to him at George at RaiseLabs.com. Uh, you can see my t Twitter handle there uh, and my email as well. So please feel free to link uh, out to us and reach out to us with any additional questions uh, that you might have. Uh, we're going to send out a recording of this webinar uh, to everyone who attended. And uh, so please feel free to share that. Uh, we would love to hear from you on ideas that you have or specific challenges that are you're experiencing in your campus. Uh, but so for George and myself, uh, really thank you for joining us this afternoon and uh, take care. Take care. Oh, wait, I, whoa, whoa, got one question that just came in, beating them on the wire. Can we, oh, yes, yes, uh, question. Can we also get a PowerPoint presentation as well? Yes, we will send that out as a PDF. So yes, thank you for asking that. Uh, awesome. Great. Thank you, George, for joining me uh, today. Everybody have a great day. All right. Thanks, everyone.